Hi everyone, and welcome to reInvent 2020. Thanks for tuning into our session, How Wyndham Hotels is Building Resiliency for the Long Run. I'm Joanna Todd, Head of Worldwide Accommodation and Lodging for AWS, and I'm part of a dedicated team who focuses on the specific needs of the travel and hospitality industry. The accommodation and lodging segment includes hotels and resorts, alternative accommodations like homes and villas, and lodging service providers. Our team understands, especially now, that the needs of the travel and hospitality customers are unique, and we're proud to play a role in helping our customers navigate this unprecedented time. I'm honored to be joined today by Scott Strickland, the Executive Vice President and Chief Information Officer for Wyndham Hotels and Resorts, the world's largest hotel company. AWS represents some of the most well-known and beloved travel and hospitality brands in the world. And the breadth and diversity of our customers gives us a unique perspective and the ability to recognize common themes and challenges during times of disruption. It also means the insights shared and the lessons learned from today's sessions are applicable to companies everywhere. In 2020, as the COVID-19 pandemic spread, we witnessed companies go through three phases, response, continuity, and recovery. And while it hasn't been easy, we're inspired by the tenacity and the innovation of our customers at each stage. We've seen customers lean into technology to become more resilient, and that includes using AWS services to enhance customer experiences and increase operational efficiencies to transform their business for the long run. In addition to learning from what Scott shares with Wyndham's story, I encourage everyone to check out the two other travel and hospitality sessions featuring Richard Haig, Chief Technology Officer for JustEatTakeaway.com, session ID TRV203, and Jeffrey Go, the CEO of the world's largest airline alliance, the Star Alliance, session ID TRV201. You can also learn more about AWS Travel and Hospitality through our ebook, about building resiliency and also through our blogs, case studies, and customer content at aws.com forward slash hospitality. 2020 has been a heartbreaking year. However, as someone who spent most of their career in the travel and hospitality industry, what I know for sure is that the industry is resilient. And also that the game-changing innovations born out of this disruption will not only positively impact and improve the way we travel, but also improve the efficiency and the industry as a whole. Let me share one example with you. As COVID-19 began to spread around the world, one of Australia's largest and most successful technology pioneers, SiteMinder, the global hotel industry's leading guest acquisition platform, knew that they could play a role in supporting not only their own customers, but the industry as a whole. The team moved quickly, and in April, for the first time, SiteMinder released their proprietary data on the momentum of hotel bookings around the world, sourcing the bookings from SiteMinder's 35,000 customers across more than 400 booking channels globally. The new SiteMinder World Hotel Index was spun up within a matter of weeks by leveraging the flexibility of AWS technology and it has grown to become the leading indicator of hotel reservation and guest arrival trends globally, an industry tool that provides never before seen insights into when guests are likely to return to hotels after the pandemic. And SiteMinder is already working to launch a number of other great products next year, which will take automation to a new level for hotels. A fantastic example of an industry leader continuing to innovate, even while responding to unprecedented challenges, leveraging AWS. And now, it's my pleasure to turn it over to Scott Strickland, who will share insights with you about Wyndham's own innovation journey. At Wyndham, hotel technology is a core part of their business plan, and the strategy that Scott and his team developed with AWS support has enabled Wyndham to tackle everything from large-scale data center migrations to large brand integrations to crisis management. With AWS, Wyndham has been able to standardize its platforms, making it easier to innovate and deliver an improved user experience for guests, employees, and franchisees alike. It's an integrated approach with AWS that drives value across the enterprise and one that allows for continuous innovation, even in the most difficult year the industry has ever experienced. Scott, it's great to see you again, and many thanks for joining us today.
Thank you, Joanna. It's an absolute delight to see you again, and I really appreciate that introduction. I also appreciate being invited here today to share a little bit about our overall AWS journey. Really to understand that journey better though, first we need to understand a little bit more about Wyndham Hotels and Resorts, and that's where I'll start. Then we'll talk about when we got involved with AWS and how we chose them, transition into a couple case studies, including a big integration that we had, as well as how we transform data into information, and then close out a little bit with some lessons learned and next steps, because there were some lessons learned along the way. First off, if we take a look at Wyndham, we have over 20 brands worldwide, starting with our most aspirational with Wyndham Grand. And in the top right corner, we have Travelodge, our most economical. We like to say at Wyndham that we have a brand for everyone. And no matter where you travel, Wyndham will be there to welcome you. We're the world's largest hotel company by total number of properties with roughly 9,000 hotels globally. And we're growing by about two hotels a day. And each one of those hotels needs information technology. The good news is technology is part of our overall business strategy. When we look at what Wyndham does, at its core, we are a brand. And our brands have to represent our brand quality and be consistent across the world. We also have to provide a solid loyalty program, great sales support, and a marketing framework worldwide. Behind all of this, we have Wyndham Technology or Wyndham Technology Solutions, as we like to call. If you look in the right-hand corner, you can see the IT logo. And we say that Wyndham IT puts the people in IT, and you can see that represented in our stylized person. One of the differences, though, about Wyndham IT is that, yes, we include infrastructure, ERP, digital, security, network, like normal IT shops but we're also responsible for all of the technology at the actual hotel, which means that if a franchisee is trying to check someone in and they can't find the reservation, they call somebody in our organization. This gives us a unique insight into what's going on in the actual hotel. It also gives us an insight into the guest behavior because quite often franchisees will call in based on guest requests. We're able to take all of this information and disseminate it across our organization, as well as to our vendors. Now let's pause and take a look at actually how did we get involved with AWS and what our journey's been so far. And by the way, our journey isn't over yet. First off, our fundamental approach at Wyndham is do not build it yourself. We've partnered with some of the best in the business on cloud-based platforms and cloud-based solutions because we believe that companies out there can better develop their own solutions than we could. If we start at the left and go to the right, we have a common digital platform across all 20 brands. We have a single central reservation system globally. We have a handful of property management systems, and then we have cloud infrastructure behind it all. The cloud infrastructure, of course, is represented by AWS and AWS's partner, Rackspace. Underlying all of this, we have a sales and service platform with Salesforce.com. Our journey with AWS really started with our first data center migration. We had a 30-year-old data center where we were doing everything from buying the diesel fuel for the generator to running the old HVAC systems. And we realized that's not really what a hotel company should be doing. So we moved out of that data center and into a co-location facility and AWS at the same time. We further grew our AWS footprint when we spun off from Wyndham Corporate. About in 2018, we spun off from overall Wyndham Corporate, rang the bell at the New York Stock Exchange and established our own public entity. This meant that we had to set up our own shared services infrastructure, our own security layer, our own network layer, and yes, some of our own applications. We did this in less than eight months, 
And that entire migration saved us 45% of our old operating costs, proving to us actually that, hey, the cloud is better. The cloud can actually deliver on some of this. In doing so, we established our first run at the cloud operating model because running an IT organization in the cloud is different than running an IT organization when you own and operate your own data centers. Let's delve into that a little bit. So our cloud operating model in general enables all the good stuff about the cloud. Yes, we can rapidly deploy good new environments. We can ramp up and down based on resource utilization. We can deliver faster for our customers. That's why you go to the cloud to start with. But we also leverage Moore's law in our favor. And I like to joke there's a corollary perhaps to Moore's law, which says, sure, the capacity doubles every 18 months to two years, but the cost reduces as well. And this is one of the huge benefits we found in our migration out the cloud. In addition, there's new service offerings available about every week or so. Amazon releases something new. Keeping up with that can be a challenge occasionally, but that has built-in innovation for us and our organization. We also can partner with folks that Amazon and our other partners bring to the table. So you take a look at that operating model and that requires monitoring and encouragement. What's that mean? That means that we have to monitor the cloud a little bit differently than we ever did before. And we have to encourage our organization, our folks to operate with a different mindset than they ever have. We also have to encourage them to keep up, to keep up with what's going on in the marketplace and to keep up with some of those new service offerings that Amazon's offering, for example. Ultimately, we like to joke that we have to let it go. And you can see we represent this with our reference back to uh, one of our favorite Disney movies. Some people have asked, should we look at hybrid clouds? Should we be in multiple cloud environments? And we've decided no. And the reason for that is first off, getting the right people for a single cloud environment is hard enough. Secondly, you have to keep those people up on what's going on in the marketplace. Third, you have to establish those vendor relationships and maintaining a significant vendor relationship is a tax on your internal organization. And if you had two cloud offerings, you'd have to keep up with all of those services that are coming out on a weekly basis. And that can be really tough. Let's take a look at one of our best use cases, which is actually around the overall integration of an entirely new brand. So earlier I spoke to how we established a platform. We have these five digital platforms out there and we were able to leverage that to bring in La Quinta in less than 10 months after our purchase in 2018. This is an entirely new brand with 900 hotels that was integrated in less than 10 months. Pretty exciting for us. The benefit to La Quinta certainly was we drove increased distribution. So suddenly they were available on more channels in the marketplace than they were before. And they were able to leverage our technical platforms for other benefits such as improved websites, better service levels, and some of the cost savings that they received. We had a commitment to Wall Street in terms of synergies and we exceeded that commitment. And we exceeded the, in a reduced time than we had originally planned. We also exited their physical data center. Taking a look at their physical data center there on the left, we migrated out of it and into a representation of what I imagine an AWS uh, data center or a Rackspace data center looks like on the right. So how do we use AWS throughout this process? We knew as we went in that we were probably going to use them for the technology. That's kind of a no brainer but we were surprised about how much we use them from a people side. So from a people side, they recommended some of the SIs, the system integrators, and some approaches for us. They also continued to invest subject matter expertise, and they provided overall integration advice. Amazon's gone through a lot of integrations. They buy companies probably on a weekly basis as well. So they were able to tell us, here's some gotchas, here's what you should look out for, and here's how to approach this overall integration. They were also super flexible in terms of the contract. They said, we know what you're trying to do. Don't worry too much about the contract. We're here to support you. We'll work out the financials together. 
And then of course, from a technology side, they were able to provide that flexible environment, ramp up and down as we needed them to. Something really interesting that we delivered as part of the La Quinta integration was robotic process automation. For the first time in our environment, we deployed robots, bots, across the organization in a big way. We were able to rapidly provision this environment in a cloud-type environment. We created over 100 bots, and we quickly enabled two big business wins. First off, the bots sit there and they help somebody during check-in. So for example, the bot will recognize based on what you're doing on the screen that it looks like you're trying to split this across two credit cards. Can I help? It also looks at rate optimization. It says, okay, how can we optimize the rate so that we drive people to our hotels in an optimized and beneficial manner for the franchisee? By going through the La Quinta integration, we really gained a lot of confidence for future integrations. This was the second brand that we brought into our five key digital platforms, and we've proven to ourselves that yes, we can do this, and we'll be able to do it in the future. One of the benefits is that there's this invisible back end that AWS supports so that we can rapidly integrate the new loyalty program, the new app, the new property management systems, all the reasons that people join the Wyndham brand, we can provide that to them faster than we ever have before. Let's take a look at another use case where we convert data into information. Now really to better understand this, we have to talk a little bit about what's the scope of our environment. We have a loyalty program with 78 million loyalty members. On an average day, we have about half a million che people checking in and out of our hotels. And on that same day, we might have about half a million people hitting our website, which gives us a lot of data flowing in and out of our environment and a lot of unique potential guest customer records. We realized we needed to be able to create a classic cloud environment, one that was gonna be scalable, stable, and secure. Let's take a look at how we did that. On the left, we have our loyalty system and our central reservation system. They input and provide data into a set of S3 buckets. We use Kinesis data streams for that, and those are configured between 800 and 1,000 transactions per second, so that we're able to get that data in very quickly. The data lands, and it transitions through three different environments. The red zone, or the red airport terminal for us, is where the data comes in, and it's unpacked. The next zone is where the data is modified. So if there's any extractions that we need to have on the data or any joins, we make them there. And then finally, we have the gold zone. And this is where we represent the data to the outside world. Each one of these buckets is built on Lambda, which is what that, what that means for us is we can spool it up or down. We can instantiate it up or down based on usage, and we don't have to have them always available in there. Once the data is ready, it's fed out into our customer data platform on the far right. Drilling down on this, one of the critical aspects when you're running with this much customer data is securing it. So what we've done here is we've set up three different types of users. So we have a user who can put the data into the environment. We have a user who can initially encrypt and de unencrypt that data. And then we have a different user type in turn who can link out to the AWS private link and provide it finally, to our customer data platform. This means that if credentials are ever stolen or shared between one user or another, no single person would have access to the entire set of data or be able to unencrypt it and use it for nefarious purposes. I provided a link there at the bottom. I encourage people to take a look at that as well in terms of ways we've used the security here. So we built the environment. What does that actually enable us to do? One of the great use cases here is we can support new hotel openings. We're capable of sending up to 3 million hotels for a local hotel operator. So you're a new franchisee, you're opening a hotel for the very first time, Wyndham can provide that email marketing support for you based on our 78 million loyalty member database, based on people who've been searching the web in your area. 
or people who have an affinity for that geography so that we can help target folks that may want to come to your hotel. In addition, we can take a look at, hmm, who's opening these emails? Are we getting the opt-in that we expect here? Are we getting the opening rate that we would expect? And if not, what do we need to adjust? Because we have these data feeds set up in near real time, we're able to make some quick adjustments to our marketing campaigns and optimize them even further. COVID hit nobody harder than the hospitality industry. And on March 13th, suddenly, we all had to go off site from our corporate locations. And many of our franchisees saw their guest demand tail off. The good news about being in a cloud environment is it allowed us very quickly to ramp up for work from home. We exited the office on March 13th, and by March 16th, over 98% of our workforce was effectively working from home. Another good benefit that we had as we came into this environment was we could flex up and down in terms of our costs. Cloud environments are by definition transaction-based, and if there's less transactions flowing through the system, you pay less. If you're not running your own data center, you also don't have to worry about providing your own patching and security because other third parties such as Amazon or Rackspace or whoever your providers are, are providing that for you. Earlier, I spoke a little bit about the benefits of people. And one of the things we saw was that Amazon partnered with us beyond just the technical. One of the first calls I received actually on Saturday the 14th was from my Amazon account rep saying, Scott, what can we do? How can we help? Don't worry again. Don't worry about the contract. Don't worry about uh, financials. We will figure that out together. We want to partner and do the right thing for the hospitality business and your franchisees right now. One of the benefits is we were actually able to deliver significant new solutions and functionality during the crisis. Again, because we were in a cloud environment and by moving off site, we didn't have to stop development. We didn't have to stop innovation. So let's cover a couple of those solutions now. On the franchisee side, we were able to quickly deliver a room last rented report. Many of our guests were coming in and saying, can I stay in a hotel room that hasn't been rented for 48 hours, 72 hours, or even 96? Before we didn't have that functionality. Nobody asked about that, nobody cared. But we were quickly able to pull that together and deliver it to our franchisees. Our franchisees also suddenly needed a new mobile-enabled cleaning list. Their housekeepers, many of them had been there for 20 years, had to have a new sanitization checklist that they'd never executed before. And a great way to execute against something you've never done before is to have it on your mobile device. Okay, I need to clean A, B, and C. I also need to clean D, E, and F and ensure I leave behind some sand hand sanitizer that I've never done. On the guest side, we were able to deliver an entirely new mobile application platform. So we had a version of our mobile app out there, but we were able to deliver an entirely new one with different APIs and that was set up for the way that guests actually rent rooms and stay at hotels now. An example of that is Lightning Book and Instant Hold. What we found is a majority of our guests weren't booking in advance because they were driving cross country because they were driving from A to B, they weren't flying, and they didn't know necessarily where they were going to be at the end of the day. So we were able to provide new functionality that allowed them to rent a room and hold that room without a credit card, or to very quickly perform a lightning book, again without a credit card, in just a couple taps and reserve their room. So what did we learn as we went through this? It's now been about a three year journey or so. Every year we put together a budget with NIT, and every year we have a classic rock theme. Three years ago, our classic rock theme was based on don't stop believing because we were taking our first steps into the cloud and we'd sold the idea of cloud savings and cloud flexibility and cloud scalability to the rest of the executive team. So we thought what better song to play than don't stop believing as we were asking for our initial budget. Once you've made that initial move to the cloud, you need to continue to say, why not cloud? Because you don't want to be in that hybrid environment if you can help it any longer than possible. 
Secondly, we believe that choosing one cloud is the right approach, especially while you're maturing. And then finally, you're going to want to over communicate. Yes, you'll want to over communicate to the folks that are giving you budget, but you're also going to want to over communicate to your teams, to your guests, to your franchisees. Here's why we're going to the cloud. Here's what you're going to see. Here's some changes that are going to occur. So who cares? Are we just geeking out here or is there real benefit? So our franchisees absolutely care about this because the costs are variable, which in turn means we're able to provide them one of the lowest cost solutions in the industry. Our guests care because we continue to deliver innovation even in the crisis. And certainly our shareholders care because we're not paying for resources that aren't being used. So what's next? Well, first, we're going to want to refine our current cloud operating model. We're pretty good, but we can always get better. Secondly, the bad guys don't stop innovating. So we can't either. We have to continue to upgrade our security tier. Thirdly, we're going to want to leverage some of those new AWS offerings. Once a week, we can take a look at some of those services, bring them in for built-in innovation in our enterprise. Some of our vendor partners don't want to come into the cloud, and it's time to pull them there, or it's time to get new vendors. And finally, some will say that ah, you need to be ready to respond to the next business need. But by partnering with AWS, we believe we can do better. We believe that we can predict the next business need. I appreciate the opportunity to share the Wyndham story and hope everyone learned something.